So our patient is a 38-year-old male who was a pedestrian struck by a motor vehicle. Uh, he sustained a right gastillo type 2 open tibia shaft fracture, uh, also had multiple facial fractures, closed head injury. Uh, he had an intracranial pressure monitor placed, so initially was not quite stable to go to the operating room, uh, intubated in the surgical ICU, uh, but uh, was taken to the OR then for operative debridement and external fixation of the tibia and wound closure. Um, and once he was uh, stable, uh, we uh, brought him back to the operating room uh, about five days later for removal of the external fixator and intramedullary nailing of the tibia. So here's our setup. We have a um, radiolucent extension on the table, so there's no metal railing underneath uh, the entirety of the table from the uh, knee down to the ankle. You can see that we have this uh, sort of black foam ramp that we use that uh, keeps the leg uh, elevated so that when we get our images, especially the lateral images, uh, it's completely clear of the other uh, limb, as you can see. Uh, I do like to keep the uh, opposite leg um, relatively palpable uh, at the heel as much as possible. And uh, you can see we've got the leg secured uh, with uh, tape and a blanket. And um, we'll go ahead and, and shave and scrub and, and go through the approach. So we'll mark out our, our incision over the distal quadriceps tendon in the suprapatellar region. Uh, we then pre-inject with local anesthetic with epinephrine. Uh, then we dissect down, and usually I'll use a 10 blade to make a midline split in the quadriceps tendon. Get a couple chills. All right, okay. so here we have our split in the quadriceps tendon, and after doing this, you should be able to access deep to the patella, and typically through the patellofemoral joint. Now I'm feeling a little bit of root resistance here. A little bit of resistance, so I'm just going to kind of come in with the hemostat. Kind of pop through there, spread a little bit. And now I kind of feel a little bit better access there. Now I, I feel my, my finger is all the way under to the inferior pole of the patella. And now we're going to go ahead with our instrumentation. So we're now going to insert the protection sleeve for the opening reamer and for all the instrumentation that's going to follow. Uh, you can see there's sort of a plastic sheath and um, that's going to go in into the patellofemoral joint. Okay. All right, so when you have the sleeve at least with this system, all the way under the patella, it should be pretty far down. If you're stopped here, you're probably caught on the patella. I'm going to gently make my way under the patella. So this is probably going to be up against the tibia at this point. So now what we can do, at least this system, we're going to switch out this protective plastic sleeve. Put in this metal sleeve. Or metal sleeve. Yeah. All right, we've got the x-ray coming from the opposite side here. X-ray. Good starting position. Now, a lot of times, to avoid going too anterior, you may have to lift your hand up slightly like this. See the back Okay. So we're going to get the pin through the sleeve. So before you send it, we're going to check again here. So we have our protection sleeve in. Now we're inserting our guide pin uh, through the protection sleeve. Uh, we're going to get an AP view, and I want this uh, just on the medial side of the lateral tibia spine, as you can see here, directed down to the center of the intramedullary canal. Uh, the first pin I place is actually that anterior pin on the lateral view. So I thought it was a little bit too anterior. Now this particular system allows you to place a second pin in parallel fashion. So I actually went directly posterior with that second pin. Then I removed the first pin. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is make sure that uh, sleeve is all the way down against the tibia to protect the femoral, uh, patellofemoral joint before we start reaming. So now we insert our opening reamer, uh, remove that, and then that's followed by insertion of the long ball tipped guide rod. I like to make a, a small bend at the end of the rod as you can see I'm doing here before we put that in. 
So we now insert our ball tipped guide rod going through our long protection sleeve into our uh, opening portal uh, and then down across the fracture site. We're going to do a closed reduction of the fracture and uh, use CRM imaging uh, to help uh, guide this across the fracture as well as palpation and manipulation by feel. And um, then we're going to get the guide wire into the distal segment, uh, central as possible uh, as shown. Once the guide wire is down, we now use our measuring tool to determine the predicted length of the nail that we will choose. Uh, this is done by inserting the radiographic ruler over the guide wire. Uh, we get a lateral x-ray and confirm that the ruler is down at the edge of the portal. And then we take a measurement. We'll then do our flexible reaming, uh, starting at uh, 8.5 millimeter end cutting reamer and going up in one millimeter increments until we hit the diaphyseal fit uh, with that chatter sound, uh, at which point we'll go up in half millimeter increments, usually to one or maybe 1.5 millimeters over that size. So if we hit uh, diaphyseal fit chatter, let's say at 10, I'll ream up to 11 or 11.5 and then put a 10 millimeter nail with the corresponding length that we already measured with the ruler before. Before you actually put the nail in, once you're done reaming, with this system, you have to be sure to remove that metal sleeve uh, and not try to put the nail through it. So now we're gonna insert the intramedullary nail attached to the insertion handle, which is gonna go through the outer sort of rubber portion of the protection sleeve. We've removed that metal part already. And then the nail is gonna go in as usual. So as the nail is going in, you want to make sure that your rotation of the fracture is appropriate uh, and you can see he's uh, looking at that uh, right now and you also want to make sure that the nail itself is rotated properly with respect to the tibia because yes you can still have a good reduction with the nail potentially a little bit rotated but what's going to happen is your interlocking screws are now going to go through a trajectory uh, that may not be safe, let's say from a neurovascular standpoint, uh, depending on where you're placing those screws. So both uh, aspects of rotation are important to watch as the rod is going in. So now that we have our targeting device attached to the insertion handle, uh, we're going to mark out our incision for proximal interlocking screws uh, for a stable uh, mid-shaft fracture like this. I'll typically just place two medial to lateral proximal interlocking screws. Uh, so you see we've made an incision on the medial side of the proximal tibia. Uh, we are then going to drill bicortically. Uh, we're then going to measure. Um, now you can measure sometimes with calibrated drills, uh, but in this case we're checking that but also using a depth gauge. And then after that we're going to insert our screw. So you can see with this system uh, it allows you to insert the screw by power. Uh, and it's a self-retaining uh, screwdriver, in fact. Uh, and then you can switch the handle from the drill to the handle and then insert the rest of the screw by hand. Uh, and then the capture for the screwdriver uh, comes off of the screw. Distal interlocking screws are placed using freehand perfect circle technique and we'll typically place two screws for a case like this. After all the screws are in place, we go ahead, take final images, and then we will remove the insertion handle uh, by using this wrench. Uh, once the bolt and insertion handle come out, don't forget to remove that rubber protection sleeve, uh, and then irrigate out the knee joint and suction out any debris, uh, which is really important. Uh, and then after that, you should be able to start closing. Final images demonstrate good overall alignment of the fracture with good cortical apposition. Uh, the implants appear to be well positioned with appropriate length of the screws. The nail appears to be reasonably countersunk proximally and of good length overall.